All right. I, I saw that a few minutes ago when Martha McCall asked uh, uh, Mike Pence where he was leaning up for this uh, presidential contest. I, I did not expect the answer he gave her that he is not endorsing his former boss. I wonder what Ken Langone thinks of that. The Home Depot co-foundry himself had some issues uh, with Donald Trump. Kind enough to join me now. Ken, very good to see you. What did you think of what the former vice president said? Not Donald Trump. Uh, it's his opinion. What he where he stands and how he feels and. I accept it as such. Is it your opinion? Do you share that opinion? You know, <clears throat> last week, uh, another network showed Trump a clip of interviewing me back three or four months ago, where I said my concern was that if Trump won, that four, it would be four years of getting even and retribution. I'm happy to say that Trump's reaction in, uh, uh, encourages me. He said, quote, retribution will come through our success. If he means that, that's the right answer. In other words, that he's going to do things that have to be done that will benefit the American people, and he's willing to be measured by that. So if he meant what he said, I'm encouraged that he'll, he won't do what I'm worried he might do. Uh, I don't know how to respond, Neil, to his behavior. I can't. I mean, it's it's. Um, uh, I can only I can only use words that would be pejoratives, and I don't choose to do that. I, look, America is where it is. I, I will say this to you: What do we have? Three hundred and forty million people in this great country, and these are the best two we can come up with. That's a question. And the other thing, Neil, is ask yourself the question, the people that control the Republican Party have to ask themselves the question, how is Trump able to hijack the party? That's a big question. See, I've, I've felt for years that our political class really was not connected to the American people. And I think what's happening now is a reflection of that. But it sounds like Ken, you, I, I, I what like you're saying. It There's sounds a lot of people like you in this country are saying that are all that right notwithstanding, now. you're going to support Donald Trump. You're going to take him at his word that success will be a so-called revenge. You hope to believe that. Uh, 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 I didn't say. Will, will you? Will I didn't you say, vote for uh, him? I, I, as of right now, my vote stands the way it is for my dearly beloved wife Elaine. You'll write her in. Okay. Well, first of all, Neil, I'm, I'm a resident of New York, so my vote won't count because I'm a Republican. I won't vote. I can guarantee you I will not vote for Joe Biden. That much I can assure you, ever. I think he's probably the worst president we've ever had. And what goes on, I mean, this latest stunt by Schumer is a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. You're what the hell about, are they thinking about? about here's, Chuck Schumer, a, who is advising elections in Israel because Benjamin Netanyahu is, in his words, a disaster. Right? Yeah. Right. Israel is one of our strongest allies. Thank God Israel's there, because if Israel wasn't there, we'd have to be there. The Israelis are providing a valuable service to the American people by being there. And let's not forget the horrors, uh, absolute horrors of October 7th. Do you realize what those poor people were subjected to? Anyway. All right. So I, did, I, just, we're, we're, I want to just be clear, Ken. I'm sorry. I just Hobson's... want to be super clear. When Go last ahead. time you were on, you said you were, you were going to write in your wife's name as an alternative because you didn't like the two choices. Right. It sounds like you're uh -huh. still inclined to write her name in. Uh, but it yes. sounds like could Donald Trump win you over as he has, you know, much of the party has rallied around him, minus Mike Pence, uh, John Thune in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, and many, many mm -hmm. others. They're all rallying around the nominee. How do you feel about that? Look, uh, I certainly couldn't vote for Biden. I, I, as I said, I, I, for a okay. million different reasons, for a million different reasons, this guy should not be president of the United States, in my opinion. Unfortunately, or I should say fortunately, Trump did a lot of good things in his first term. The tragedy is, if he could have controlled his mouth, and if you could have been more gracious in dealing with people, it might be a totally different situation. For example, 
The night he won big in New Hampshire, here was an opportunity to go out there and say, hey, I want you all to know something. If I win, I'm going to do everything I can to bring the country together. I'm going to do everything I can for all of us to respect our differences, but also respect each other as Americans, and that, that our motives are driven by what's best for America. What does he do? He goes out and he mocks her dress. I mean, there's a good example of him having a great opportunity to seize the moment, and he does exactly the opposite. It's nuts. Would you ever go for a third party candidate, or, or, or Robert F. Kennedy Jr., or any one of the names that are being bandied no. about, the shrinking no. list of names for no labels? No, look, let me tell you the best chance we ever had for a third party candidate was Ross Perot. And yeah. I'm, I'm happy to say I was active in that campaign for him. It's 32 years ago. Uh, he, he would have been a great president, and more importantly, he had a viable uh, effort. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. I do believe it influenced the outcome. Uh, I think I think Robert Kennedy. Uh, uh, I mean, first of all, I don't understand what the guy stands for. I mean, I know he's he's got this river keepers thing and a lot of other stuff like that environment. Uh, but you can only flog the environment for so long before you got to come up with. Look, you know, you know, Neil. Here's where my head is right now. All those people coming across the border into the United States. 10 million people? Think of it. Virtually every one of those people left the country where socialism prevailed. Not one exception. None of the democracies had people in those lines waiting to come into America or break, breaking the law to get into America. Venezuela, Cuba, uh, Haiti, go right, go right down the list. Socialism does not work, and if you think it does, you, you, you're kidding yourself. It does not work, and it's been proven not to work over many centuries. But, of course, many are coming through the border from you know, places like Mexico and Colombia as well. Democracies, last time I checked, tested democracies at that. But that is a big issue to you, and I know you've mm -hmm. mentioned that many times. Is it your sense that one party or the other is better at addressing it? Well, I think this latest pitch by... The senator from New Hampshire, uh, Bernie Sanders, about a 32-hour work week. I'll give you the math. A 32-hour work week raises labor costs directly 20 percent. Why? Because the eight hours are not working. You've got to hire somebody else to cover those eight hours. You're not going to squeeze 40 hours into 32 hours. It's slave labor if you do that. So the only way you're going to be able to work it is to go out and bring in eight new hours of labor. Who's going to pay for it? Who always pays for it at the end? The consumer. Who gets punished in, in inflationary periods like right now? The little guy. Food costs are about 15 percent in the last two years. Who's getting hit? The person making $75,000 a year or less. These are the people that get punished Inflation is the most regressive tax of all. And people don't seem to understand this 32 hour work week, the costs have to be passed on, or the businesses that absorb those costs will no longer be attractive for investment because they won't. Uh, we don't have a magic machine here that says, okay, 32 hours, uh, two, eight hours less labor, I'll crank this up and I'll get my profits that way. Doesn't work that way, Neil. Yeah. I mean, for I example, wanna, Home I Depot, we pride ourselves I, I do want to on the quality. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm being very rude here to you, but I don't mean to be. Well, I do want to explore this, this work no, week thing. Fine. I do want to talk to you about I TikTok. I love you anyway. I still love you. You know that. Okay. I, I want to talk to you about the TikTok thing and all of that. A lot more to get into it. <laughs> Ken Langone, the former head, uh, the guy who created Home Depot. We'll have more after this. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.